evening, everybody, and welcome back to the bar. I greet you today with a thought of the mind. Do you have thoughts? Do you think, therefore, that you are? I don't know what philosopher once said that, and I honestly don't have the wherewithal to go Google it or Wikipedia it, or use any source of the internet right now. My phone's on silent. I put these things on do not disturb when it's our time to shine. If you do have thoughts, get rid of them. You don't need them anymore. Today, we're creating a couple different iterations of the Mind Eraser, a cocktail that uses some sort of coffee spirit, some sort of neutral spirit, and then some sort of fizzy beverage as well. I think the recipe that I'll be following today is gonna to be coffee liqueur, coffee, vodka, vodka, and various different types of soda and whatnot, but I think you could kind of riff on this a couple of different ways. And to be perfectly honest, my original plan was to just kind of make the same recipe over and over and over again with different sodas. But to be perfectly honest, I kind of like the idea of instead going through a formula route. I just figured that out right now. So we're gonna riff on it as much as we want to. Today's bar session is going to be mind erasers. Erasers, some of them, I don't really know. I didn't do much, re much research into this. I found a particular cocktail recipe online that it was advertising that it uses coffee, vodka, and club soda or ginger ale or lemon lime soda. And so we're gonna make it into a formula instead. There are other cocktails out there that kind of follow formulas as well. I think the Negroni is one of them. The, the Negroni is kind of just like a formula per se, not necessarily a particular recipe. I know I've seen a couple of Negroni Spagliatos pop up on my like Instagram story, like my Instagram feed recently of just people being really, really like really excited about it. And to be perfectly honest, I don't exactly know what cocktail that is. And, but that's something that I'm willing to Google because it's related to the topic at hand. A Negroni Spagliato uh, contains, ooh, there we go, Campari Prosecco and Sweet Vermouth, as opposed to being Campari Gin and Sweet Vermouth. The Spagliato part, I'm guessing, has to do with the fact that you're putting a little bit of, like, sparkling wine in there, which makes sense. Spagliato is apparently Italian for mistake, but the drink is far from it, according to, what website did I get this from? I got this from an email from Curiata.com, who is not sponsoring this, so I won't recommend them because they wouldn't they wouldn't shift to my previous address in Philadelphia and that, that grinded my gears in the wrong way. So get your shit together, Curiata, or maybe I'll buy from you again. I know I'm gonna need to go to the store after this at the end of this episode. In particular, the coffee liqueur that I plan on using this evening is Mr. Black. I like Mr. Black. It's just it's just really good. It's significantly less sweet than other coffee liqueurs out there like what else do I have down here? Um I only have this other Kahlua here. I think Patron XO is also a, a coffee liqueur, and there's probably others out there as well, but I just can't remember what they are. Um, I don't like this. It's just, it's really sweet. I had an original bottle of it, but my mother used all of it when she came over, I think, two weeks ago, so um, I'm completely out of it. But that's fine. You could also just use regular coffee as well, but as I said, I, I didn't really plan for this to be the case. Uh, I did not prepare any coffee, although there's nothing stopping me from it. Wait a minute! Actually, I do have coffee downstairs. It's in a bottle labeled La Colombe or something. So I'm gonna go get that. Um, um, I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna go set, get something coffee related. Whee! What a great idea I've had. I'm walking downstairs in the basement. Can anybody still hear me from down here? I'm not really sure if you can, to be perfectly honest. If you can, excellent. Camera team is strong. Uh, Here I come. Here I go. Two steps. I'm here. I'm back. I grabbed the coffee stuff. Um, it, oh, I took the label off of this container, so I don't exactly know what brand it is, but to anybody who's a coffee aficionado, what is, what should be in this container? I'm not exactly sure. Anyways, uh, I have coffee related stuff now. Um, now let's get the stream started. But first, whew, I had a very big dinner. And I think it just ran so hard that that dinner wants to come back and say hello. Anyway, I'm going to put these below the bar until we get to the part where we actually make the cocktails, which is starting immediately because it's a very, very simple recipe to make. So the original cocktail recipe for the Mind Eraser calls for two ounces each of coffee liqueur, vodka, and some sort of soda. The first option I see is club soda. You can also use lemon lime soda, and I've also seen ginger ale or ginger beer used in there as well. Um, I think I'm just gonna go with the club soda just to get an idea of what the original cocktail is supposed to taste like, at least according to one website, which I think was, I have that on my other thing over here. 
wait for it. It was sourced from thespruceeats.com. So thanks to thespruceeats.com, you are a sprucey eater, I suppose. Honestly, this is a very, very easy cocktail to make. You just kind of layer every uh, ingredient, one on top of each other, in your glass, and then it gets cold, and so you drink it. So I'm gonna very early take out our little sacrificial yoga blocks to get a nice view of a cocktail built in the glass. I'll just put that there for now and then gather our ingredients. As I had mentioned prior, coffee liqueur I like is um, Mr. Black. It's nice. Um, I plan on probably using everything that's left in this bottle tonight, so I'm going to need to go back to Jersey. I have a couple of doctor's appointments that I got to take back from the other state. Um, and then I can only pick it up there. I don't know why. The, for some reason, I can't find Mr. Black liqueur in any Pennsylvania liquor stores, and it is very, very bothersome because it's just, it's just excellent, and it has so much character to it. I could, I could go on a whole rant about that because it's just super duper good. I think of the bottles in my collection that I bought multiple of, this is the one that has the lead because it's the second bottle I bought of this particular spirit, and I don't think I've done that with any other thing that wasn't some sort of like specialty liqueur like like Kemp, like campari if you want to sub out campari with april like you can but campari is campari you know um if i had to go for any coffee liqueur i'd go with that one the other thing that we're going to use is vodka and the vodka i'm using is a really really nice vodka. actually you know what i'm going to go with tito's because i want to conserve the other vodka that i have the other vodka that i do have is skunk town it's from a local distiller at home but um, we had to. We took a we took a financial hit this week, so I can only afford buying one more bottle when I go home. Uh, and it's not gonna be. It's gonna be the Mr. Black. It's not gonna be a vodka, because uh, I had to die, buy two bikes the other day, which was kind of annoying. I was riding my bike after it was repaired by the local bike shop, um, and it's all of a sudden stopped working. And I brought it to the bike shop, and they were like, "Well, it's no wonder this thing broke. It wasn't fixed properly." Did you know you you're riding a single speed converted bike now? And I was like, "No." Why was I supposed to be under that impression? Anyway, they gave me $200 off of my uh, next bicycle purchase because they kind of screwed it up themselves. So it's a pretty good deal. And then all of a sudden, too, uh, I think it was last week, Anna was riding around and she kind of got she got caught in one of those uh, tram tracks that go through Philadelphia. And she kind of slipped and she fell and she hit a car and the bike got completely knocked out of way. So we got a we bought a new bike for her, too. So now we have really nice new bikes. It's great. Mine rides really well. I'm very happy with it. And the other thing we need in terms of the cocktail is, um, is some club soda. I got club soda down here. Um, I just, I bought it recently. It's from, uh, I don't know, whatever the symbol is. It does not say. I'm gonna take a guess and say it's probably from Whole Foods. I don't really know. It's got like the little like half crescent moons of various different colors of the yellow, red, purple, and green. Anyway, I feel like I kind of jazzed on enough about that. I would like to erase from my mind this whole experience. Ha ha. Ho ho. Ha ha. So the only thing you're going to do, it's, it's super duper simple. You just take glass, put it into ice, speaking words. Take your glass. No, put your ice, put it into your glass, and just put all the ingredients in there. Two ounces of each. It's super simple. We've got everything that we possibly need. Let's do a zoom. Let's do a zoom on this guy so we can watch things go. Maybe there'll be a nice contrast between me and my white shirt today. I tried to think of what I could wear, and the, the best thing that I could think of was something that was um, white. Because an erased mind. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Anyways, so first thing you're going to do for your mind eraser is you're going to take ice and put it in your glass. I got a big cube here. It looks kind of nice. I'm, I'm proud of that. And put your ice back in the fridge so it doesn't melt for the next one. Depend, depends on how long we start talking about this thing. Take two ounces or 60 milliliters of your coffee liqueur, whatever that you have, and Mr. Black. Pour that in at the bottom. I believe this was the order in which we're supposed to build this. I could be very wrong about that. I will check that in a moment. I wouldn't want to be doing things incorrectly. Get him. Ooh, that was good. That was good. I did not completely spill things everywhere, which is great. That's always a great thing. What do we got? Yeah, it's coffee, vodka, soda. What I'll be trying later, too, is I'll put some... Uh, it's it's cold brew. I bought it from the store. It's cold brew. It's not cold brew concentrate. It's just cold brew beverage. And we're just going to see what happens um, to see when we put it in there. I'm wondering, honestly, whether the coffee liqueur is sweeter than the coffee beverage, which I'm assuming it is, because it's a coffee liqueur, meaning that it's got more sweetness in it. It's got more sugar in it. 
Next pour in two ounces or 60 milliliters of your vodka, or as we progress later, other spirit of choice. We'll kind of see what happens if we sub things out. Two ounces. Now, according to the instructions that I found, that if you angle it properly, there'll be a nice gradient of dark to light at the top, and where at the top will be your club soda. It's super duper fizzy, so it should kind of float to the top there, although it's also got some amount of sugar in it, so it might not mix as well as we think it will. But we're gonna give it a shot. Also do club soda, just in the same ratio as before. It's all equal parts. Ooh. Oh my God. Wow, you are making a mess, aren't you? <laughs> that was on me. Woo! That's what I get for shaking things around. Ha <laughs> ha! Hear that bubble. Anyway, you need you need two ounces of that. You you need two ounces. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Two ounces or 60 milliliters of that. That effervescent, bubbly, yum. And that does have kind of a nice gradient to it. I was a bit aggressive with that, to be perfectly honest, so I don't think it came out as nice as I wanted it to. Um, also, my lighting situation is not best for this. I realized that it could be really nice to have like a spotlight that shines right on the cocktail, kind of like that. Oh, that's actually not that bad. Ooh, whoa, I'm slipping on my floor now because I've got a bunch of stuff on the ground and it's very, very wet down here and I don't have a towel. Yes, I do. Wait, there's a towel over here. I'm gonna clean up after my mess. I'm putting a towel on the floor um, so I'm not squeaking around the entire night because I'm still wearing shoes. Fun fact, I usually don't wear shoes when I stream. I'm usually just in socks. I would also say, fun fact, I don't wear pants when I stream, um, but that would be giving the wrong impression because I do indeed wear pants when I stream, and I'm actually wearing pants right now. I could prove it to you if I wanted to, and uh, but I don't think I need to. But I am wearing pants, so you can just you can just take my word for it, and uh, we won't we won't talk about the concept of me not wearing pants on stream again, unless you know if the people want, the people can get. It all depends. So this is your mind eraser. It was actually that simple. It was a very, very quick cocktail to make. It's so, so easy. The Mind Eraser with equal parts, coffee liqueur, vodka, and club soda. You can also sub out with other types of sodas, which got me the idea of changing things up even more. It smells like coffee, and I like that. I've been on a bit of a coffee kick these past couple weeks, so I've been, uh, I've been like, oh man, I want something that's coffee related. I had coffee yesterday. I had coffee this morning. Actually, today at Wawa, they were advertising iced lattes for $2, any size. And so being the frugal person that I am, I thought, aha, if I get the bigger size of coffee for less amount of money, then I am going to save money, which works only if I take that increased amount of coffee and spread it out over the couple of days that I would otherwise be spending on coffee so that I don't spend any more on it. But like an absolute monster, I decided to engulf all 32 ounces of this pumpkin spice latte from Wawa, which honestly wasn't that good anyway. And I'm very disappointed in that. Usually I'm a bit of a basic person and I'm not ashamed of it. I love pumpkin spice lattes, but Wawa's pumpkin spice lattes are crap. They're not good. I didn't like them. But I think I like the mind eraser because it smells like coffee. It's probably not gonna taste anything more than just coffee with a little bit of a bubble to it because of the club soda. And lo and behold, we were totally right. It tastes like very, very, it's, it's lightly coffee. I can taste the, I can taste the kind of character that's being built around it because of the uh, club soda. It's got a nice little, like if I had to describe carbonation as having a taste, it's almost like, I don't really know how to describe that. I think if I had to describe it in some way, it's bringing out a different angle of the coffee than what I would usually taste from the coffee liqueur. Mr. Black in general does have a touch of sweetness to it, but I think there's a lingering coffee taste that just is dissimilar to what it is usually without the club soda in it. And I don't exactly know how to describe that. I remember when I took a wine class once upon a time that like carbonation does have a particular taste to it. And when you're having something like a, for example, a uh, actually, I don't know if Prosecco's are carbonated, come to think of it. But if you have like certain types of sparkling wines and stuff, it does impart some sort of a uh, flavor onto the tongue. Um, again, I don't exactly know how to describe that, but it's like you it's like you made coffee soda. And there's also, also that other bite to it that is very, very clearly alcohol in there, naturally. But it's a very pleasant drink. I think it could probably be even cooler. Um, I didn't have any of my liquors. Um, they weren't cooling before this. So I just got this big old ice cube in there. Probably should have stirred it. I can stir it a bit more. Just to make sure everything gets all nice and cool. And integrated. Because if it layers like 
what I'm being told it's supposed to, then naturally the liquors are going to separate and they're not really going to combine together in the way that we want them to. I personally like a drink that's nice and, um, nice and combined together. Otherwise, you know, unless it looks cool. And I guess, yeah, it kind of looked cool with that nice gradient, but the gradient is gone. That's fine. All right, so it tastes even more like coffee now. It's really, it's really quite, it's kind of basic, the mind eraser. And I'm trying to wonder like what the, where the idea for the mind eraser came from. And I'm guessing like it's alcoholic enough to make you forget the night. However, it's got, I was gonna say, it's, I was thinking like, cause it's got caffeine in it. Like, no, not really. I don't even know what coffee liqueurs in general contain caffeine. Let's look at this weird Kahlua. Do you even have caffeine? I don't think you do. And if you do have caffeine in you, are you even supposed to share it? You could be lying to me. How does the clue even taste? Does it smell? This is the mud splayed one. It smells like chocolate. It doesn't even smell like coffee. But I guess they're kind of similar. They're similar in a way. You know, I guess that's what we'll do, you know? We can use the Kahlua as well. We're gonna change things up completely. We're gonna make three mind erasers. That's what we'll do. We'll use the original recipe with the good coffee liqueur, and we'll do some other recipes with it, with the other coffee liqueur. We'll try that. We'll try that for a, uh, for a stream. I remember seeing on YouTube, there's a guy that I watch named Greg. He, uh, he does, he, he did matrices where he would kind of take the base spirits and line them up under particular rows and the mixers and put them into columns. I think he did it for Manhattans. I think he did for martinis. And he decided to see what is the best, you know, what is the best spirit to use combined with another spirit. I think when he did his, um, I guess when he did his, if he did a martini one, I suppose he probably used various different types of gin or maybe vodka and different types of vermouth, it's either the dries or the sweets, depending on how you like your martini, I suppose. Um, and I guess if you mix anything in a martini, which I don't really think you do, I think it's just gin and vermouth, honestly, if I think it at the top of my head. Haven't had a martini in a while. Not a, not a good one, at least. Or I guess if you want the brine in it, you could put olive, like you could put olive brine in it, which is a dirty martini. And I like those. I've had dirty martini before. But let me think. Let me think. What can we do for the other mind erasers? There are various different ways that we can erase our mind. I'm thinking for another one, we're gonna definitely gonna use this Kahlua liqueur, which is more chocolatey. So what would go well with something a little more chocolatey? What other base spirit? I would think we're kind of getting away from things a bit. It's not gonna be neutral. I feel like if you're gonna combine something with something that is chocolatey and sweets and mudslide rum and coffee liqueur i guess you could mix it with more rum if you wanted to you could put it I, my immediate thought was bourbon but i think i'm just gonna mix the rum based liqueur with another rum and then see what kind of soda we put on top of it i have various different types of soda choices here i have coca-cola i got sprite I've got ginger ale, there's ginger beer, I just have straight up tonic water, and there's this weird Coca-Cola in my fridge called Dream World that kind of tastes fruity. I'm inclined to give that a try. And I wonder, I feel like if I had to choose for the next one, all these drinks are going to look the same, so I don't think there's a sense of taking a picture of every single one of them. But, I think, I'm going to go for another rum. I like with this Myers. It's also dark. So this is the dark liqueur. This is a dark liqueur. What else is dark? Well, Coca-Cola is pretty dark. Let's grab that Coca-Cola from the fridge. It's it's a new like specialty flavor or whatever that they have. Um, like I said, it's called Dream World. It's like it's fruity in a way. I'd say that it's very peachy. I don't know how this is gonna go. I'm gonna try it anyway because I want to try it. So that's just what we'll do. Sounds good. I like that. I'm gonna need another glass while I take this mind eraser and use it to slowly but surely erase my own mind. Oh, and don't forget a coaster. Otherwise, my bar will get on nice and not happy. I also did bring an eraser on set. Erase my brain with it. Let's grab another glass, shall we? I have an identical glass for identical cocktail. Co uh, cocktails. Identical glass, identical, Identical glasses for identical cocktails. Yes. That's how we run this show. Uh, I wish I had more matching glasses, to be honest. I think I only have, I think, 
three types of glasses that I even have more than one of. Um, well, actually, there's one, two, three, four, five. Five. There's like five different types of glasses that I have multiple of, which is nice, not including like the wine glasses and stuff. Uh, I did have more of this. It came in a box of Di Sorono, and it came at a time when I guess, ugh. Gucci or Versace, one of, one of the clothing brands was doing like a deal with one of the liquor brands. It was like, yo, we're gonna put uh, a fancy glass that we designed in with your bottles. And um, one of Anna's previous college mates, excuse me, um, her parents own a liquor store. So they were able to get a couple of those glasses because like people would buy the, they'd buy the bottles and they'd sell the bottles, but they wouldn't sell the glasses because it was a liquor store, it wasn't a glass store. So they had all these other like glasses and whatnot in storage. So the question was who gets them? And I wanted some glasses specifically, was these glasses, kind of, kind of nice looking. It's got a nice shine to them. And they're, they're cool. They've got like little spikes on the bottom, so it actually has some adhesive, like it has some friction, more friction on that whatever surface that you put it on, which is kind of cool. And it works pretty well. But I gave, I think, two away, and I dropped two of them. Um, so I'm slowly but sure. That's why you have multiple glasses. You have multiple glasses so you can make mistakes with them naturally. So this version of the Mind Eraser does not use coffee liqueur. It uses, well, I guess it does use coffee liqueur. I was lying about that. I got confused. It does use coffee liqueur, but it uses a more sweet coffee liqueur, something that's a lot more on the liqueur side than it is on the coffee side. Instead of using vodka, a neutral spirit, we're gonna use rum, the spirit that the coffee liqueur in question was created with, because that's what Kahlua says in the bottom. It says rum and coffee liqueur. So apparently that's what Kahlua is. They're being honest for once. And then the other part is just some other brown soda. And so I could open up an entire can of regular Coca-Cola, but I have this dream world sitting around here and I'm honestly curious to see whether or not this is gonna make a big difference on whatever the cocktail flavor is going to be. I've got a pretty good idea of what the original Mind Eraser tastes like. And it's pretty good. Pretty good indeed. In any case, so, let us continue. I need, just as before, I'm gonna do, it's all in two ounce in intervals, all in two ounce intervals. So, let's go for that. I need two ounces, again, of some sort of coffee liqueur. You can use Kahlua. I think this is actually more creamy, so I don't know if it comes out a dark color. No, it's, well, technically if this is a cream liqueur, should I have kept this in the fridge? My Kahlua mudslide has not been kept in the fridge. I will be perfectly honest about that. I was not under the impression that it needed to be kept in the fridge, so I just I just never put it in the fridge. I suppose we're gonna see whether or not that has a negative effect on the cocktail this evening. Not that I'll be able to tell. I'm more or less indifferent. It extends the like st uh, stuff like that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Just a small little text message. I will also add Maya's rum. Let's add two ounces of it, shall we? Two ounces of Miles Rum. I am not on top of my game today with speaking. Then again, it's probably because I already so quickly started drinking the alcohol that we've been making. Usually it takes us a little while to get here. I try to, usually for these cocktail streams, I try to stave away from quote unquote easy to make cocktails because I'm like, oh man, like, you know, if I do too much of it, like if I do it too quickly, then there's barely any stream. But you could just take one cocktail and just make riffs on it a bunch, kind of like what we're doing now. For as much liquor that we have left. And then Cameron gets to drink all of them. No, I actually have to drive back home tonight because uh, I have various appointments in the morning. In the meantime, while I'm back here, I'm just gonna clean up some of my bottles that I leave laying on the ground. I have a very, I don't know what it's like at actual bars because I've never actually worked at a bar. But I've had, uh, every, almost every time that I do these streams, I have a really, really bad habit of taking my bottles out and not putting them back where they belong. So instead, they wind up all over the floor in various different places around my feet, and I can kick them over, I can push them, they can get lost within the other ones. It just doesn't work. Granted, I don't think there's a lot of space back here for this bar thing here, but I know that there are bars out there where there's significantly less space, although I feel like usually they have like a, a wall of spirits behind them. I feel like that would be a pretty good look. However, then I wouldn't have this beautiful chalkboard that I can draw whatever I want to on, which has been fun. I like being able to draw whatever I want to back there. It's great. So this, mm, this cocktail here actually has a... I guess the Myers rum really isn't as dark as I thought it was going to be. And the Kahlua 
has a it's got a creamy look to it so i guess all the color is going to be coming from the caramel color in this coca-cola dream world which gotta open that up i did not shake this one on purpose coca-cola dream world why because why not i guess do two ounces of that yeah Let's see how that looks here we go dream world coca-cola that is mm, that's actually i don't really like that okay actually i am going to take a picture of this and i will zoom in on it because it just kind of looks it looks a little weird to be honest and i think that's worth sharing so let's let's zoom we'll put it on top of the sacrificial yoga blocks again as i zoom in this is kind of weird looking because kalua is a this particular Kahlua, not original Kahlua, this is Kahlua Mudslide. It's a cream liqueur, which I honestly did not realize in the long time that I've had it. So it's got some really interesting, like, it's an unintentional layering. It's not supposed to look pretty, I don't think. I don't know if there's any way to go about making this look pretty. I guess what I can do is I can kind of, I'll mix it up a bit and see if that makes it better. Please God, make it better. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, this is why there's this is why there are many different ways of making a cocktail because if we made them all the same, um well, there'd be no <laughs> if we made them all the same, there'd be no uniqueness. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Wow. Okay. I took a small little sip of that from my bar spoon. And I am not happy with it. But I also am kind of happy with it. It's not... It's not something that I would expect. So, let's see what that actually tastes like. To be clear, what I just did here was take one recipe, and I would say bastardize it. I replaced... I just kind of made some weird substitutions. It's still got coffee in it. It's still got base spirit in it. And it's still got soda in it. But it kind of looks like that. I don't know. Honestly, we shouldn't be judging books by book books by their covers. So um this is a mind eraser. It's kind of chunky. It's got a really interesting fur effect going on. If you've ever seen like those like like those plushies that are made with like the um I don't know, better analogy. If you've ever looked at a fish tank that has algae growing in it, the fish don't look lively. You can barely even see the fish if there are any left in there. It looks like that. It kind of looks like somebody took a nice barf into a into a, a bowl of water and then mixed it up. I can't even say that it smells like coffee, to be honest. it's It vaguely smells of coffee, but Kahlua itself, at least this Kahlua mudslide. I should be very specific. It's Kahlua mudslide. The actual Kahlua is gone. My mother used all of it. It's just the mudslide. It's this bottle, which I have had this bottle in my collection for since I started doing mixology and stuff. My first run to the liquor store included buying this bottle of mudslide Kahlua because I was like, I know I need a coffee liqueur. And I know Kahlua is a good coffee liqueur at the time. Um, but I did not realize that what I actually got was this mudslide. It doesn't even say cream on it, but it definitely has cream in it. Does this say keep refrigerated? <laughs> on the back of this on the back of this bottle, granted, so all of the colors on this is yellow. And on the back of this bottle, in orange text, I'm gonna zoom in on this so y'all can see this. This is this is borderline readable. The smallest text on here, it's printed in orange, says refrigerate after opening. That little, I hope the camera is allowing us to see. Refrig refrigerate after opening. In the most, in, in the most eye unfriendly way you could possibly think of. This is little, this is orange on top of yellow. That is really, really difficult to see. Which makes sense that, you know, after, oh my goodness. Um, God, when I start mixing things. I'm 24 now, so obviously it was three years ago. That's how we do the math. And it was definitely legal at the time. Three years I've had this bottle and I have not refrigerated it once. Mm. Some would say that's a bad idea. 
But we're going for it because I'm already this far down into the rabbit hole and it's not like I can climb out now. This is a mind eraser modified, very heavily modified with Kahlua Mudslide, Myers Rum, it's a dark rum, and Coca-Cola Dream World. Oh my god. What an effervescence. First thing I got was Coke. I think I'm getting Coke in there. I can taste the rum. The rum is, it's in the front of my mouth. It's molasses -y. I recognize that flavor. I've had Myers rum in a bunch of different cocktails before, and it tastes like, maybe other dark rums taste like it, like the kind of molasses-y rum, I guess. What kind of rum are you specifically? We love to hear from our customers. I love to hear from my customers too, but I don't have customers. Nobody buys anything from me. Buy my books. I'm not an author. Buy something from me. I don't sell things. I don't know where I, I don't know where I was going with this. Uh, but it was distilled in Jamaica, so it's Jamaican. Jamaican? No, let's not go there. It's like. It grows on you. I think. I think it kind of grows on you. There's a couple of different flavors going on there. I don't know enough about what the taste of that Kahlua mudslide is, but I don't think that tastes like coffee at all. Compared to the other mind eraser, the one that was made correctly, this is actually like, there's bitterness to it. I, I guess that's a good analogy. I like my coffee black. I like to drink my coffee without any creamer in it. I like to drink my coffee without any sugar in it. Sometimes when I'm in a really good mood, like this morning when I got the pumpkin spice latte, 32 ounces from Wawa and drank the whole damn thing, I was in the mood for a more premium beverage, a premium coffee beverage, if you, if you will. It includes the sugar. It includes the syrups. It includes the ice and other sweeteners and proprietary whatever garnishes on it. It's a premium coffee beverage. Or it's got like foam on top, like one of those like cold cream, the one of those cold cream, cold brew things, nitro cold brew cream chocolate vanilla thing from Starbucks. It's um, it's a latte, I think. I don't really know, but they put other stuff in there too, and I'm sure it's proprietary, and it's definitely not metal shrapnel. No, that's the Starbucks of the past. They don't do that anymore. But like this one actually tastes like coffee in the sense that it's bitter. It's like taking it's like taking coffee and adding soda to it, like just regular club soda. I'm not sure how else to, it's like a diluted coffee. I think if I had to be more specific, I would say it's almost americano esque in the sense that if you imagine the taste of the coffee, but water it down a little bit and just put some pop into it, that's kind of what they taste like. It's very it's very familiar. It's very comforting for a coffee drinker like myself. It is a rather enjoyable cocktail. And it's gotten cold now because the ice has been sitting in there for a while. Um, I'm going to mix this doodicky one more time because I want to incorporate more of the floaty bits. Um, it's legitimately separating. Like, this is interesting. This looks like it could very well have been like a chocolate smoothie or something that somebody put a glass in. It's like it's leaving particulates on my spoon. My God. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally okay. Before I forget, I need to take a, I need to take a backup picture of the good cocktail. My God. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. I know. I feel like I feel like I'm making too much a big deal of this. I'm gonna step back for a moment. I don't think it's actually that bad. Not really. I just think something about it is unpleasant. I'm trying to figure out exactly what that unpleasantness is. I need to figure out what it is. I think it's the Coca-Cola. I think legitimately what's going on is there is this weird flavor in the Coca-Cola that is not gelling well with either the coffee or the rum. It's one of those things happening. And I want to say it's probably the coffee liqueur. I'm not exactly sure. Wait, we can do a test. I have more Coca-Cola left. And now I'm determined to figure out what's going on here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna take this other tiny glass. I'm like, I'm really determined to see why the heck this tastes so weird. I need my mudslide back. All right. Mudslide. Dream Coke. Um, let's do a little bit of each and see what's going on there. Actually, wait, I think I have an idea of exactly what's going on here. And I'm about to explain it in a second, but I'm gonna confirm it. I think it's the mudslide. It's the cream liqueur. 
and it's the Coca-Cola. And I think I know exactly, I know exactly why this is. Oh my God, I'm remembering my chemistry classes. We're gonna watch what happens when we take something with cream bits in it and add soda to it. I'm bringing the sacrificial yoga blocks back. I have to. This is science, baby. This is, this is science at its finest. Maybe we should put more of it in there. No, get off of my thing. Stupid fly on my bar. Disgusting. Nasty flies. If you're trying to get rid of flies in your apartment, apple cider vinegar and uh, apple cider vinegar and Dawn Dish detergent. It works. I'm actually going to put, I'm going to put more. I'm going to put more in here just so we can see what happens. Because this is, I think, exactly what's happening here. We have this cream liqueur. It looks solid. It looks okay. For the most part, it kind of just looks like chocolate milk. Let me put on my little flashlight, my second light. Look at that. It looks all right. All angles. It's looking pretty good. However, if there is actually proteins in here, characteristics of cream or other lactose products, then what's going to happen is those proteins are going to denature when you add acid to them. That's what happens. That's how milk curdles. When milk curdles, it gets this sort of acidic taste to it. It, come, it, it forms a completely different flavor. It becomes sour. And lo and behold, Coca-Cola is a sa is a it is an acidic ve beverage. I think specifically Coca-Cola has phosphoric acid in it. Phosphoric acid. And it is ingredient number 1 2 3 4 5. A carbonated water. I think carbonation in general is a little acidic. So what happens is as you mix them together, the milk in there will curdle. I add a little bit in there. It starts to look a little weird. Does it look weird from the camera? It's about to I add more and more and more, and all of a sudden, things there's there's a bubbliness that's happening. I can already see a separation, at least from my angle. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure how that's translating on the camera. But I can now take my bar spoon, probably pull off some particulates. Oh my god, yeah. Yep. It's kind of... It's soupy now. It is soupy. Oh, there is the, there's the, what, the separation. It's chunky milk. That's what's happening. It's it's chunky milk. Oh my god. Okay, we have made a very important discovery today. If you're gonna make any if you're gonna make any sort of drink with coffee liqueur, don't use a cream one. Just just don't do it. I think I just discovered that today. Wow, look at me. Look at us. We're scientists. We're doing science on the show. My goodness. That's so cool. It's so cool in the most disturbing ways. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is like, this is like becoming more and more solid. This is like that one time, it's, oh my God, it's like a, that's why it's like a milkshake. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, now I'm actually really happy that I had the Mr. Black over here because otherwise my only choice would have been, been this coffee, this, coffee cream liqueur and it is it's cream all right but what's interesting is that the mudslide the bottle i don't think says that it's got cream in it at all or any sort of dairy product it just doesn't say but what the hell kalua what if i'm lactose intolerant maybe you updated your your product labeling and it's just been three years so i just don't see that now that or maybe because it's been in there for so long that's the main source of the problem Oh well, we discovered that. Um, I definitely would not recommend anybody drinking that, so I'm not gonna. But I kinda want to. Just a sip. Yeah, it's different. Well, now I'm actually curious too. One of the processes of making a different cocktail, which I think is a clarified milk punch, is you actually take the milk, right, the cream substance, and you try to get all of those particulates out of it, and you clarify it, it gets a little bit clearer. All the solid substances on the inside that make it look opaque are brought out of solution, caught in this filter, and then put somewhere else, probably thrown out, honestly. But I wonder if you could do that with this. And I'm very curious. Do I have my cheesecloth over here? I like, I want, there's a part of me that wants to, so I'm going to do that, but I need to find where my cheesecloth is. Where's my cheesecloth at? I could have sworn I got it upstairs. There you are. There's over on my chair over here. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. While we make 
a different iteration of the mind eraser. I'm gonna put this glass over on the side. I'm gonna put some cheesecloth on top of it. And I'm going to put the 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 horror, the the curdled the curdled mind eraser. What what would you call this one? I mean, if you want it to curdle, you could. Um, what happens to your brain when you watch too much TV? The mind eraser, the mush eraser. My mind is mush. Mind is mush. My mind is mushy mushy. After that one, very mushy mushy. I'm just gonna put my cheesecloth in there, and I'm just gonna remove this sad sad. Oh my god, this sad, sad, ah, sad, sad ice cube. I want the ice cube out of there. Go elsewhere. Go, go bother someone else. Go, go put in someone else's glass. You're it. Oh, it's solid. Ooh, it's very solid. I don't like that at all. What's going on? Nope. No, no. No, 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 no. Anyway, you're going to take your now curdling mind eraser, your mush of the mind, and put it into this filter. And just kind of let it do its thing while you continue the rest of the stream and hopefully not have to think about it anymore um it's moving pretty quickly so i'm just going to pour in more and more of it as i can until it doesn't let me anymore and then we will we will continue things will it clarify it i have no freaking idea will it work I, I also again please stop asking questions i don't know i am not i'm not the one i wouldn't know it is actually coming out the bottom um how fast that's going not exactly sure but um, there we go. We're gonna put that off to the side and hopefully have something nicer off the other side when we're done with it. Um, I'm hoping so. Man, this is off to an interesting start. My goodness, I don't even know about that one. So note to self, if you're gonna make yourself a mind eraser with coffee liqueur, I would not make or recommend anything cream-based. Kahlua mudslide, off the table. The other cream coffee liqueurs, off the table. Just, Just don't do it. I just would not recommend it. And if you did make that mistake, then I recommend using uh, a different coffee liqueur um, and drinking a proper mind eraser to <laughs> erase your mind of the mistakes that you've made. Or perhaps if you erase your mind because of those mistakes, you'll forget what you just created and you will go back and you are doomed to repeat history over and over and over again. And perhaps you'll make it a second time. Hopefully not for somebody else. My goodness. Anyway, that's gonna that's gonna keep doing its thing. You're gonna you're gonna go to the side. I am hopefully not going to forget about that because I am. There is, there is something forming. There is something collecting at the bottom, and it is clear. There are no particulates in it, so it might actually be pretty good. So we'll try that afterwards. The <laughs> we made a mind eraser so far. There's a I'm gonna call it mind mush, mind mush. I'm gonna call it. It's like it's like a couch potato. I'm gonna call it mind mush. And um, we're gonna have a clarified mind mush. <laughs> what an idea. To putting this in perspective, what the, the vision that comes to mind is like what being told when you're a kid, like, oh, when you watch the TV, if you watch the TV too much, like the TV is gonna turn your brain to mush. And that's what I imagine your brain would look like. Or perhaps when you erase your mind from the mind eraser, you have to put all the things that were erased somewhere because like conservation of matter or something like that. And that's the shit that's left behind. That's the nuclear waste of the mind eraser. That's, that's the erased part of the mind. That's the eraser shavings of the mind eraser. And then we're gonna filter those out, get the nice ones, clear it up a little bit and make those shavings look something a little bit different. Because at least when I use my eraser, like there's always this like weird residue left behind, like from the from the pencil and stuff like that. And maybe this is just a metaphor. Maybe this whole thing is just a metaphor for an actual uh, pink pearl eraser or um, whatever the hell I drew there, which I don't know what brand of eraser that is, but um, I've never had one like that. I've never had one of the rectangular erasers, to be honest. I've only ever had these pink ones and like the really shitty ones that come up on top of like different mechanical pencils. It's like they suck. Specifically, I have bad mechanical pencils. Um, these are the ones I'm talking about. They're, um, they're Bic brand. B-I-C? No, just kidding. This is not Bic brand at all. It says pen plus gear. Don't, don't buy pen gear mechanical pencils. The erasers suck. The graphite is brittle. They don't draw well. It's, it's, it's not fun. It's not a, not a nice grip either. Um, and I think I bought 25 of them from Amazon. And they've been sitting at my desk for uh, probably also three years, just as long as the mudslide has been in my liquor collection, because I don't use them. They're bad. Just like the mudslide, the Kahlua mudslide. I'm coming to some very hard conclusions during this stream. 
It's no wonder that it's still been sitting there for that long. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, we have to recover that from that somehow. So let's see. What we've learned so far. Don't erase this part of the mind. We have to learn from our mistakes. Coffee liqueur without the cream. All right. That's good. Something that's a little less on the liqueur side. Something a little less sugary. Very nice. Almost Americano-like. Now, if there's an espresso liqueur out there, I want to know about it. Because that sounds like it would be wonderful. But I guess, I don't know if that exists yet. I know Mr. Black does like a mezcal, like a mezcal Mr. Black combination, which is, I guess, mezcal coffee. And if I were to think of anything, any combo that is going to yield something a little more espresso-like, I would think mezcal and coffee, I think. The mezcals I've had are very smoky. I don't think they're all like that, but it's very possible that some of them are. And that might be the one they use. I don't really know. I haven't done my research. I got a birthday coming up, though, and I'm hoping to get a bottle of something. Maybe I'll gift it to If nobody gifts it to me, I'll gift one to myself, I think. I want some new flavors. And also, I've been making a lot more cocktails than I usually do recently. So, I'm running out of ingredients and stuff. But that's fine. That's okay. So, we're going to move on to a different iteration of the Mind Eraser. Um, and I'm going to get a fresh glass for it because I've soiled at least one glass so far. So, um, we're going to do another one. This time, instead of using a coffee liqueur, I'm going to use just coffee. I want to say that this bottle used to say La Colombe on it when I bought it from Giant the other day, but I was so, I was in one of those states where like, I don't know whether I was like not feeling so good or I was just really on a roll, but I was like, I, there was a little like piece of plastic at the top here and I peeled it off and I was like, hmm, I gotta get the rest of that plastic off. So I eventually peeled off the entire bottle, um, which is something that I find myself doing. <laughs> I don't know if it's like, it's one of those like, you get like those oddly satisfying videos where somebody's like pushing a rake into some clay or they're, I don't know, arranging pieces of rice on a piece of paper so that they're all like aligned in the right direction. Or I don't know if that's oddly satisfying or just like like a potential symptom of OCD, obsessive, obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm not exactly sure. I tend to get the two mixed up sometimes, at least from what I see on my For You page, newsfeed or wherever wherever I digest my content these days. It's literally all over the place. The, inter the internet is a very... The internet, my friends. The internet indeed. Um, but so I was very satisfied about, I, I guess satisfied of peeling off the first part of the bottle and I just peeled the whole thing down, which I try not to do because it's in situations like this where now I have an unlabeled container with some dark liquid in it and I'm claiming that it's coffee, but there's no proof that it's coffee aside from me saying it is. <laughs> Smells like coffee. It's definitely got coffee in it. Um, so please take my word for it, or don't. I can't force you. We're gonna use regular coffee for this one. I am putting the Dreamworld Coca-Cola next to what it created. Phosphoric acid plus coffee cream liqueur. Whew. I will say it tasted pretty interesting though, and there is a sizable amount of liquid that is collecting at the bottom of that cup, so I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing what happens. And I'm also not looking forward to cleaning off that cheesecloth. Um, I have a new cheesecloth. I got the good cheesecloth. Um, that's still the really shitty one that kind of looks like it belongs in like a, like a, like, um, made of one of those, like, steampunk balloons. Like, I feel like they're made of, like, fabric and stuff. That's what that cheesecloth was for. If you want to build your own steampunk zeppelin, you use that cheesecloth, which I think I bought from Target. I don't know where I got this cheesecloth from. Amazon? Natural cheesecloth. The Majestic Chef. Two square yards. And it's got pictures of a turkey with it on top of it, and pouring out what looks to be grease from a pan of either fried vegetables or chicken fingers. Good for basting turkey, straining sauces, making cheese, yep, polishing silver, cleaning mirrors, making art projects. So am I, oh, it says it's single use only. Oh, well, I didn't know that when I bought this. I've been using these guys multiple times. Well, I'm not a hoarder. I'm just resourceful, I promise you that. Now, the thing I'm wondering is whether you use this to polish silver and baste a turkey at the same time. What if your turkey is made of silver? What if I'm straining s silver sauce? Can you make a sauce out of silver? You can make silver sauces, right? Like, edible glitter is a thing, so you must be able to make something like that. That, that can't be... can't be new. It certainly sounds scary, though. Anyway, we're gonna use regular bottled coffee. There's no alcohol in it, at least to your knowledge, in the next version of the Mind Erasure. What's next? What else needs to be there? I'm, I'm blanking. We need a neutral spirit. We need a different spirit. I am inclined to think that because you're going a little crazy around here, please bear with me. I'm not adding any alcohol with the coffee this time. 
I won't be adding any alcohol with the soda that comes after it. So what do we do? We have a single base spirit in there and we're missing like one of the alcoholic ingredients. So you could take this a couple different ways. Instead, you could use, for example, there are various different spirits out there that don't have alcohol in them at all. If you had access to, let's say, a non-alcoholic base spirit, like, um, like a gin, whatever a gin equivalent would be, I feel like I've seen, I've definitely seen like non-alcoholic gins on the market, or I don't know if they call them gins or not, they might call them something different, but you could probably make a non-alcoholic mind eraser with by using just some coffee, just some club soda, and whatever this non-alcoholic base spirit would be. Um, I would, like, the only thing that I have close to that is probably like the club soda itself, or perhaps this tonic water that I have behind me, but I don't, I don't want to do that. If you want to try that, oh, maybe we do have time for that. We'll see. We'll see. That would be my recommendation if you wanted to try it for yourself. But um, I take things a different way. If you had two alcoholic ingredients and you're only down to one alcoholic ingredient, then that alcoholic ingredient better be the thing that makes up for the other one. And um, I have a particular spirit down here um, that works for that occasion. Um, it's in the back. It's dangerous. I only use it for infusions. Although once upon a time, I had it in a very, very nice shape that I had down south at a, while we were on family vacation. It's called Everclear. Um, and it's 190 proof of alcohol. I just want to put a big old disclaimer here. This is very, very high proof alcohol. Maybe it's not as bad as like some moonshines and stuff out there, but it's pretty damn close. I'm pretty sure that if I poured this into a car's um, gasoline compartment could probably power my car for a couple seconds because uh, i have a gas car um because i'm not bougie like that i'd love to have a tesla so so give me money for a tesla maybe or whatever um so that would be my recommendation now fitting to the point of the mind eraser if you're trying to erase your mind for whatever reason not sure what your reason is, but if you wanted to erase your mind, I feel like the best way to do it is just with something that is high in alcohol. So another mind eraser, this time with actual caffeine and real liquor. You're gonna need two ounces. Oh, you also need a, uh, a uh, what do you call it? You need an ice cube. You need an ice cube, so put an ice cube in there. This one's kind of been melting a little bit, but that's okay. Cube, cube, cube. Cubity, cubity, cube. I'm gonna put this back in my freezer. It's empty now. I used all the cubes in there. So now what you'll do is you'll move the, the danger fluid out of the way. Although coffee's a danger fluid. Technically, caffeine is a drug, I think, right? Yeah, probably. You're gonna take two ounces or about 60 milliliters of just coffee. It's not coffee liqueur. It's got no alcohol in it. I bought mine from Giant. Brand unknown. Probably La Cologne. Put that over glass. Put that over top of your ice. It's gonna be wonderful. It's great. It's gonna be lovely. You're gonna love this. If you're an alcohol person like I am, and trust me, I'm sure that you are, you're gonna love this mind eraser. It'll literally like, whoop, that's it. That, that's all you need. Um, then you're gonna need two ounces of... Actually, I'm gonna put the soda in here first, to be honest. What soda do I wanna use? I was thinking about using the club soda again. But another option was to use uh, lemon lime soda. So I'm gonna use lemon lime soda in this one. I've got some spread on standby, and I think that would be a nice combination. It's gonna be a little more citrusy, uh, but it's also gonna have a lot more alcohol in it, maybe. It's two ounces, let's, let's, what's the math there? If the Mr. Black was 25% alcohol, 50 proof, and I put two ounces in that, let's just say that the equivalent was 100, 100 times 50, or 100 times two, whatever. And the the vodka that I used, which was Tito's, was, how alcoholic are you? 80 proof, 80 proof times two, and I'll have 160. So that previous cocktail, 100 plus 160, had a score of 260. And now I'm putting two ounces of 190 in it. So 260 versus 380, right? 90 plus 90 is 180, plus 200, 380. Um, this is a higher score despite having only uh, one alcoholic ingredient in it. Um, so that's what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna put the Sprite in first because I want to see if the alcohol is very alcoholic, which it is. Maybe it'll float on top of the other one. No, you know what? We're gonna do it in the right order. We're gonna do things in the proper order. Who am I 
to mess with instructions. Who am I to mess with fate? I am a mere Cameron. I am a small Cameron. I live upon this earth for one purpose and one purpose only. And that's, I think, to be happy. And I think, I think that's what we're going for here. That's why we mix Everclear cocktails, right? It's to be happy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not dive deeper into that. It's fine. Everclear, baby. I have that. To be, to be, to be clear about the Everclear, I usually use it for infusions. Usually what I wind up doing with my Everclear is it will become a part of some other liqueur and then you cut it in half. The Nochino that I made using black walnuts, um, vanilla clove, and there might have been something else in there, there probably was, was used by taking Everclear and putting in with all those black walnuts and stuff. And after it was done, we mixed it with cinnamon liqueur, then we cut it in half so that it was less alcoholic than it was previously. So please excuse me, I need to take a drink of water. I'm like already halfway done with that first mind eraser, my goodness. This is gonna be a fun day, it's gonna be a fun night. Uh, now what you need is you need the remainder of your cocktail. It can't, you can't just drink coffee in Everclear. That's not a real beverage. You have to have at least three ingredients. Because if you don't have at least three ingredients, you're not convincing anybody anything at all. So let's take two ounces of soda, whichever one you have laying around. We're going to use Sprite, because lemon lime soda is apparently the thing for mind erasers. Every time I think of the term mind eraser, I can't help but also think of like D&D &D and stuff. Because like the mind flayer sounds very similar to the mind eraser. And come to think of it, I feel like if you were to make a cocktail that was supposed to be inspired by the Mind Flayer, it might as well be related to the Mind Eraser, because I think if you, if you kind of flay your mind, kind of split it into pieces, it's essentially erased. If you scramble the memory, it's hard to access that memory. That's just that's just how it be, I guess, I wonder. Let me take a picture of this guy. This guy's significantly clearer. This is much clearer than the other cocktails that we've made, uh, the other Mind Erasers that we've made. There's just, there's a lot less color in it so this one's got like a much darker color because there was the mr black in there there was the um it was just the mr black in there um but i guess this one's just less colored than that and i guess maybe that's because of the particular whatever the difference is between like the mr black and the la cologne coffee i would think the mr mr black actually does have a little bit of sediment in it but it's not unwarranted it's it's a very good sediment it's a nice sediment we like that kind of sediment. It's almost sandy, sandy at the bottom. Kind of collects a little bit. But that just assures you that the whole process is, it's fine, it's good. It's a good process. There's real coffee in there. Um, so this mind eraser, which, I don't know. I'm gonna call this the mind obliterator. You put Everclear in it. Like, let's not tiptoe around that. That's what you just did. That's what you did, Cameron. That's what you did. Um, it's, I'm calling this the mind obliterator. It's, it's, it's a mind eraser, but it's worse. I'm gonna mix it up because I want to know. Well, actually, what does it smell like? I'd say that actually kind of smells like. That smells like legitimately like coffee. That actually smells as if you took the coffee and you actually just put cold water into it. It smells like coffee. I'm not really smelling the other stuff on it. Oh, I got. I got gunk on my nose. Oh, I got gunk on my nose. Ugh. I can do that. It's my bar. I've been holding this. I've been threatening and holding this bar spoon the whole time i'll get you I'll, or i'll get myself because there's a there's a fork on the end of this thing there's a trident and i've almost poked my eye with, with this thing multiple times which is usually why i, why I wear protection on these streams because you never know what might happen you never know when a bar spoon's gonna fly across the room and potentially whack you in the eye because i don't know you're an idiot you decided to drink that's what happens when you drink the mind obliterator i didn't mix it Mix it up. I want to make sure that every inch of this glass is covered in the coffee and spirit and... Whoa. All right. Whew. All right, well, let's get a taste of that. This is something intense. The mind obliterator. You know... That's not entirely unpleasant. Probably because there's just straight up coffee in here. This tastes the most like coffee that any of this stuff does. 
Now I want to see how it tastes compared to the Mind Eraser. This, note, this one has been sitting for longer, so it's got more dilution from the ice in it, which this one could definitely benefit from. But this is a, this is, it's alcoholic coffee. That's just all it is. This reminds me of the drinks that I used to make for myself back in undergrad, where um, I had my, I, w I was I was 21 and taking classes and whatnot, so I would have my liquor collection up on the mantle in one of my rooms when I lived at the fraternity house. I had all my bottles lined up, and at the very end of the mantle, so let, let's say I had my bottles lined up from here over to here. On the very end of my mantle, all the way over here, I had my Keurig machine, and I had it specifically so that I could, as a as a fle as a fledgling mixologist at the time, which I still think I probably am, be able to make my coffee or tea or hot beverage and try any of my liqueurs in it to try to see if I can find some new flavor combo that nobody's ever thought of. Um, I didn't do that very much. Instead, I was stressing and cramming for exams and other projects and stuff, just trying to get my degrees, and I got three. So. It worked, um, but I really didn't do that much experimentation. But that's what this reminds me of. This reminds me of the coffees that I used to make for myself. It would literally be, I would be there just thinking about, oh, how the night's gonna go. Like, am I gonna have to do a really, really long report tonight? Am I gonna have to read through this entire textbook chapter because I have notes due on Monday and it's Friday, baby, and I don't have weekends or a social life? Yes, so I would take the coffee. I'd, I'd be like nine o'clock PM. You'd turn the Keurig on put in your custom k-cup you fill that custom k-cup up with whatever's in that container of folgers that's been sitting in your somewhere above your refrigerator it's just a mass of different types of coffees and stuff but you were too cheap to go out to the store and buy another container why get another container where you can get scraps of coffee and put it into a single one and make your own blend i don't know cameron great idea you take that and fill up your k-cup you close it click the button, put a cup underneath, and let that thing rise up with coffee. But you're a very sensitive boy. You don't like hot coffee because hot coffee burns your tongue. So instead what you do is you take a little bit of ice. You take an ice cube or two, which you can't get from your room because your mini fridge only has this tiny little part that's a freezer and it doesn't work very well so you don't actually get ice from it so you go downstairs into the big industrial freezer that keeps you know the beer and the old food from the nights earlier in the week at the fraternity house and you grab what seems to be a bit of crust of ice off of the wall in the freezer area and you bring it back upstairs and you place it into your coffee cup moments later your coffee has cooled just slightly to the point where you can put your tongue into it and kind of be like oh Ah. And then you're like, ah, oh, what liquor do you use? What, what could you possibly have? And you have one of those big coffee cups. And those big coffee cups, even when you click the, the big cup button on the Keurig machine, it really doesn't fill up the entire coffee cup. Instead, there's like at least this much space at the top. Let's say it's like, do I have a ruler back here? I have a ruler back here. It's like two centimeters, like three quarters of an inch. Uh, and you're like, well, I have to fill the whole cup, don't I? Let's fill the whole cup. And you just fill it up with vodka because you took a bartending class once. You spent money on a bartending class, and if you weren't going to spend your time making cocktails from the books that you were supposed to be studying, then you were wasting your money. You were wasting your time in college. So what you do is you take vodka and put it into the coffee, and you fill that bad boy all the way up to the top, and you're like, ha ha! It's 9.15 p.m., and I made a black Russian! <laughs> I'm going to... Read my textbook now and cope with where I am in my life right now. That's what this feels like. Except instead of the coffee, it's a, instead of the fresh made coffee from the Keurig machine, it's coffee that you bought at the store in a container that probably used to say La Colombe on it, maybe. And then you fill, you fill the rest with Everclear and whatever you soda you have nearby. Sprite. I went on a bit of a tangent there. But I was reminiscing for a moment. Let me let me use this as a therapy session. I haven't yet had my first appointment yet. They've been ghosting me. Something about the New Jersey legal system and insurance and stuff. Ugh. Ugh. In any case, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest. This also has Sprite in it. And I don't get the Sprite at all. This, this, this feels more like, if I have to be perfectly honest, this almost tastes like somebody put bits of gingerbread and infused it into water. 
for some reason, like, I guess it's the combination of that, this particular coffee and this, and, and Everclear, I guess, where it's really bringing out these almost like kind of these spicy notes to it. I am not kidding when I say that this Mind Obliterator kind of tastes like liquid gingerbread, but in a good way. Like, like that you're remembering the holidays. You're remembering something good about the holiday season. It's a nice way to obliterate your mind if you drank the whole damn thing, which I, I certainly won't be. I have the, I have the drive tonight. There will definitely be at least a hour to hour and a half long refractory period after the streams end so I can drive back to New Jersey. Or, well, well, we'll see about that. Don't drink and drive, everybody. Actually, don't drink and drive. I'm, I'm staying here tonight. Yeah. No, don't drink and drive. Don't do it, guys. If you're drinking after clear, don't drive that night. Don't let a friend drive you. But I'm not going to let a friend drive me back to New Jersey. I'll just, I'll just deal with it on my own. In any case, please. Mind Obliterator. It's, it's, it's honestly pretty good. This is, this is not what I was expecting it to be. I was honestly expecting it to be literally unpalatable because I, I know people who have taken shots of Everclear before and it hasn't ended well for literally a single one of them. So I really wouldn't recommend it. Now this isn't a shot. The ice is currently melting in it. So after a while, it's going to be significantly more diluted than it was before, but it's, it's all good. Now there's still more things to try. Um, I'm trying to wonder whether or not, I think that's probably, I'm probably good, I'm run out of glasses, so I don't need to think I need to explore any more further with that. However, cocktail number two, which was also a mind eraser of sorts, a mind, a mind mush, if you will, uh, didn't turn out very well for people who are a little, uh, who are here a little bit later. We combined, excuse me. Kahlua Mudslide, which is a ch coffee cream rum liqueur, combined it with rum, an additional base spirit, an analog to the vodka from the Mind Eraser formula, if you will, and then added Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola is soda. Mind Erasers call for soda. Club soda, lemon lime, ginger beer, it's soda. It's carbonated beverage. And we put them all together, forgetting that if this was in fact an actual cream liqueur, then what you would find is that the cream is going to react with the acid and you are going to get a curdled substance that is floating in your glass. But alas, it's not all that bad. If you curdle what's inside of a cream substance, then you can, you, it's, it's solidified. You can pull it out with a nice enough filter. And lo and behold, I got plenty of cheesecloth that I can use, or at least a slab of it. And so what I've been sit leaving sitting over here is what is surprisingly a, uh, a very, very clear solution. Actually, we'll do a we'll do a grand unveiling. I think that's what I'll do. I'll do a little. I'll bring the sacrificial yoke blocks back out, put them back forefront, and do a little unveiling operation. And we put, oh my goodness, we put it on top, and we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm down with that. What a grand what a grand finale. What a grand finale indeed. We'll zoom on in on our covered mystery cocktail. It actually looks kind of spooky. I mean, it is October. Spooky time is upon us, everybody. Spooky time indeed. And so what was this disturbing, cloudy mess of goodness knows what before has now become something that looks vaguely palatable. Look at that. It's actually not that bad. It's been completely cleared. It's still a little bit cloudy, I will say, if I'm being honest. However, it is significantly less uh, particulated than it was previously. And it's got a kind of nice... Got a nice shine to it, I think. How does that how does that look? It's like it's got a nice color. It's almost it's it's almost like it kind of looks like urine from certain angles, if I'm being completely honest there. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, it, looks, it looks like straight up laser lemon color under the light. That's incredible. That is so funny. Um <laughs> I gotta take a picture of that too. That's so funny. Looks very orange from this perspective. In any case, this was combining the cream together, you've essentially clarified this milk product, this lactose pro uh, product. I don't remember exactly what the, what the physics and chemistry are that determine how this particular process works, but essentially you're taking the cream, denaturing all those proteins, I think, and then taking those proteins, which have now denatured and kind of pumped up together, and removing them from solution, just completely. So you have something that's left behind that is transparent, a little translucent, but significantly less opaque than it was before. And I know that you use this process in a, um, a drink called the Clarified Milk Punch, where I'm pretty sure what you do is, I don't remember the recipe off the top of my head, but essentially you have to take some sort of cream, you remove all the solid like opaque substances from it and you take what's left behind which is this kind of milk like like almost clear off-white image uh, um 
clear off-white fluid and you mix it in as an ingredient in your cocktail. So this is a clarified mind eraser. If you use a cream liqueur, it smells all right, honestly. It's not as bad as it was previously. And I think what we used in that was we used, um, we used Dream World Coca-Cola which is fruity in a way. Um, I don't think it actually ha it imparted too much of the flavor because even with the, the obliterator over here with the Sprite, like the, the characteristics of the soda were kind of lost on me. It really, didn't, it really didn't translate the way that I wanted it to. Or I, I wasn't expecting anything. I don't even know why I said I wanted it to. I didn't want anything out of this. I just wanted to make some mind erasers. I didn't do much planning for this one, but that's okay. That's fine. So this was the clarified one where there's no longer anything behind from that um that 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 cream liqueur and it's also got rum in it but i guess the kalua has rum in it too so what does it matter oh you know actually interesting that's honestly not bad at all wow okay hold on Oh my god, we've recovered. Holy crap, I think we totally recovered from that. That's not bad at all. Wow, it is... Oh my god, let's break that down. It's sweet. Dare I say it even tastes a little balanced, to be honest. The the uh, the characteristics of the chocolate in the... In the, in the I think there, there's a chocolatey flavor that comes from the Kahlua cream, with the cream parts of it kind of gone now, although a bit of the, that cream flavor is still kind of here and present, but it's not, it's not clumpy anymore. It's not unpleasant. It doesn't taste like sour milk anymore. It doesn't even smell like sour milk anymore. It's sweet. It's got a very nice sweetness to it that contrasts, like, it goes really, really well with, I think I can actually taste the flavors of the, the Dream World Coca-Cola in there. It's honestly not that bad. And I think it goes pretty well, to be honest. Wow, this was unexpected. I feel like we're making more and more discoveries every week, like, as we explore things and whatnot, which is actually kind of cool. Maybe that means we're becoming real mixologists now. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll get a bow tie, I'll wear a vest, I'll have bottles stacked up behind me on my own bar one day. No, I don't, I don't want that kind of life. Not really. I don't want to run a bar. I don't have to deal with bar fights and stuff. If anything, if I was the bartender, I'd probably be instigating the fights. Somebody would be like, yo, I really don't like that guy over there. I really don't like that guy over there. And I'd be like, well, I mean, your whiskey neat seems to be getting low. If you uh, go start a fight with that guy, well, uh, maybe I'll give you another one. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go make some enemies. No, I don't think I would do that. I don't know if I condone physical ways of expressing your discomfort and annoyance with people let alone that sort of physical confrontation being enabled by alcohol consumption i don't know if that's a good idea it's definitely not something that would happen at a regulated bar for realsies that is actually very tasty i would say the rum the rum combines well here I can definitely taste the rum. I can taste the cocoa. It, it's almost like it's almost like there's a little bit of creme de caco in there. Honestly, I'll do a little I'll do a little taste test to see if that's what I'm getting there. It very well could be, for all I know, it might be creme de caco. Mm. Now, creme de, th this creme de caco I have is more. It's more obviously chocolate, if that makes sense. It's more it's more Hershey chocolate bar than it is something else completely. More than awesome. Yo, what's going on, dude? Absolute hurrah here. How are you? How are you more than awesome? You are more than awesome. I already put my, oh, there are my party eggs. There we go. Actually, where's my little coffee stuff? I think gold? Is that gold? No, it's silver. I got a red one. Put on my red party hat. It matches with my red eraser. Pop. That's how we go with that. I have, mi I have missed these drinking streams. Dude, I, I assure you, I, I have missed them as well. I, I love being able to come back to these ones. And plus, it just looks so much... It feels... Not even commenting on the fact that it looks better now. Whether it looks good or not is irrelevant. It feels better now. It feels like I'm actually at a real bar. Please drink responsibly, of course. Please don't. Please, if you are somebody who is of the age of driving, which hopefully if you are of the age of driving, you're also... I mean, if you're, if you're drinking alcohol, you're probably of driving age. And if you're not, I am very, very, very concerned for you. Um, if you drink Everclear or high proof alcohol, definitely anything above 150, please don't drive. Don't do that. Keep yourself safe, please. Please. And thank you. Absolutely. This is a real great set. Thank you. Thank you. And it's great. We can also draw on the whiteboard. That's what I'll do. Thanks. Ooh. 
more more than awesome awesome you know by the way and i'm not even lying about this this is no joke awesome is my favorite word i've been saying the word awesome since i think like i was i even learned how to talk it's just awesome is an awesome word and i remember when i was um i was raised catholic so i was confirmed and so during the weeks leading up to my confirmation you would get like letters and whatnot from family members and whatnot and my aunt sent me a message saying hey there cj awesome which is what i used to go as on the internet like you're super awesome like oh did i mention you're awesome awesome is such an awesome word and i know it's your favorite word anyway love you aunt donna and like i, I love that i i definitely still have that letter somewhere around my life somewhere um and it needs to be more present. Um, it's a, it's, it's great. I, I absolutely love, I love this. Those are, those are the good times. That was when I was still on pretty good terms with Catholicism. Those times are rocky. They're behind us now. But it's chill. Everyone's got their path. But seriously though, this has been pretty good so far. The, um, the drinks that we made this evening is just various different riffs on the mind eraser. The first one that we made was a normal, what you'd call it, normal mind eraser, I suppose. It contained two ounces, all of these ingredients are all, they're all two ounces, they're all equal parts. So two ounces of 60 milliliters, take that information, take that, don't erase it from your brain. Remember that for a moment, because I'm gonna be talking in, um, actually, I'm gonna be talking in milliliters. I'm just gonna keep talking in milliliters for the stream. It was 60 milliliters of coffee liqueur, specifically one that is not cream related, 60 milliliters of vodka, and 60 milliliters of club soda combined together, built on top of each other with a big old, uh, big old ice cube in the center. No big deal. It's all right. It's all right. It's a very, it's very simple drink to make, a very easy drink to make. The next thing that we did was we took it a step beyond. We thought, well, if there is a spirit a coffee liqueur and a soda, then we can mix it in a different way. How about instead we put, instead of uh, Mr. Black coffee liqueur, we can use Kahlua, uh, specifically the cream one, which was a mistake. At least we thought it was. And instead of a base spirit of vodka, we're gonna use a base spirit of rum instead. We used a darker rum, one that's a little more, it's a specifically a Jamaican rum. And instead of um, instead of club soda, we used something that also had a dark coloring to it, which happened to be Coca-Cola Dream World, which is just, you can buy this at Walmart. I don't know if it's still available. I still had a couple of cans left over, so I felt like doing it. Mind Eraser is a riff on the Black Russian. Yes, it absolutely is. The Black Russian being just vodka and coffee liqueur. This is vodka coffee liqueur with a little bit of soda on top of it which now come to think of it you know i'm really glad that you brought that up because i was just asking myself earlier why would you call it a mind eraser and i suppose technically i i don't know if there's any sort of historical backing to this but play with me for a moment if i know attempting to brainwash people or get into their minds is a is a is an espionage technique if you get if you take like a prisoner of war you might want to try to get information out of them maybe you'll try to hypnotize them perhaps you'll try to erase every aspect of who they are and become a russian sleeper soldier erasing the mind which now that i think about it might be the origin of why they call it a mind eraser i think that's another i think that's another cocktail mystery <laughs> solved now because of the contributions of people in the community because I'm very dense and I don't come up with those things on my own. I'm sure literally any Google search probably could have given me that information, but we came up with it authentically. And honestly, like you ever build a puzzle, but you build a puzzle without the picture reference, that's what it feels like. Ever so more satisfying than what it was previously. And I am, I'm a big fan of that. But so that second mind eraser that we made, which I'm calling mind mush, it looked, it looked terrible. If you take anything that's cream based with actual cream in it and you combine it with acid, then you are gonna make something that curdles and it curdled in the glass and it looked weird. However, knowing what a clarified milk punch is, we took that combination that had all the curdled ingredients in it and we put it through some cheesecloth and it came out the other side actually quite clear and dare I say, quite, quite good indeed. And it's sweet. It smells good, and it actually kind of pairs well with that Dream World Coca-Cola, so I'm totally into that. More Than Awesome also says, I feel like there's a coffee Negroni riff that's 111, gin, coffee, liqueur, and some kind of aperitif, Campari, April, whatever you got there. That sounds pretty good. I would love, honestly, I would love to, find, to try a coffee Negroni right now, but from the cocktails that we did last week, which were all gin infusions, I have no gin in the house. I have absolutely no gin here, so otherwise I would totally make that up. It sounds super duper tasty i love gin i love coffee and i think campari is pretty good the only the only aperitif that i have like that is campari but if there are other options you know i buy gin by the case so you always got it dude i i like 
Gin is the cock. I think I have the most rum in the house, um, but I don't use rum that often because I'm a gin person. I really like gin, and I also really like. Um, I also like. I think gin's my favorite. I also like mezcal. I really, really like mezcal. But those are like the spirits that I always have the least of. Gin because I use it very, very often, uh, personally, that is. And mezcal because I, I've only there's only one brand that I can buy around me, which is really annoying. Um, but if, when I go back to Jersey, I can buy as many as I want to because Jersey's so much better with their liquors than, than, than Pennsylvania. And it kind of stinks, but it's a good thing I have family in New Jersey. And they can pick things up for me. I have friends in various different places. They pick up the course for me. It's very nice, whether that be Puerto Rico, South Carolina, New Jersey, doesn't really matter. Uh, More than awesome says they live in a in in an ABC state, so they have to cross lines to buy a bunch at a time. But <laughs> eight bottles of gin mare. I've never tried gin mare before, and I think I think I've heard that name tossed around a little bit. Gin is such an awesome liqueur, dude. If you, yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like you're probably familiar, but if you have if you haven't infused gin with teas, either chamomile, green tea, black tea, I would totally totally recommend it. It is absolutely delicious. Um, but, but moving on, just to review the other cocktails that we covered tonight, I'm going to kind of cut things a little bit short. I have to go back to Jersey tomorrow because I have doctor's appointments that I need to go to. The third one that we made was what I'm calling the Mind Obliterator because instead of using the um, the coffee liqueur that we had, which does have alcohol in it, we just used regular coffee. I just I just bought this coffee from a bottle at the store at Giant. It's probably La Cologne, but I ripped the bottle I ripped the bottle label off in a, in a tizzy of satisfaction. Um, you use instead of that. Uh, instead of the base spirit being vodka or rum or gin or whatever, instead, you can just use Everclear. I use my Everclear for your infusions, but I've also had cocktails that have been made with Everclear that when mixed properly are actually pretty damn good. And this one, pretty good. And then you, the, the last thing that you do there is I had, I had Sprite. So, uh... I'm going to go with that. I, I, I put Sprite there, and the Sprite was good. Very good combination. I would say in particular that the Mind Obliterator with the Everclear, it tastes kind of like gingerbread. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's interesting. I didn't expect those flavors to come out. That might be a characteristic of the uh, Sprite. It could be a characteristic of the coffee that I put in there. It's possible the coffee that I use does have some gingerbread notes to it, and when combined in such a way, it brings out those notes more prominently than it would when you're when you're just mixing it on your own. One never really knows, honestly. It's the glory of mixology. Oh my goodness, what's going on? I have three. Oh, I'm, I'm catching up on chat. We got we got basil olive. Oh my god, gin mare is basil olive infused, and it's amazing. Oh my god, I have to write that down. That sounds amazing. Gin Mare. Gin Mare. Sounds absolutely delightful. I love... God, I love basil. We also have three... They've got three bottles of Beef Eater with different tea steeping. Oh, absolutely an excellent choice. Beef Eater was my gin of choice, I think, before... Um, I had a bottle of Irvine's the other day, and I really, really like it. Everclear, bad decision juice. Oh my god, yeah. 35 a bottle for Mayor. Well, it seems like it's worth it. Now let's spread some, spread them legs, or hey. Oh, Young Mojo, you're coming in here a little... Ooh, you're coming in here a little a little forward, if I may say that. Um, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of alcohol out here, so who knows what the rest of the night will bring um, for, the, for the rest of y'all, at least. I'm going back through them again, I guess. The regular Mind Erasers, it's pleasant. It's, it's good. It, it definitely... It, um, I would say that it dilutes pretty... I, I don't think it dilutes very well. I take that back. I would say that, like, the Mind Eraser, if you don't drink it f quick, quote-unquote, then the, the dilution, at least from this big ice cube that I'm using, doesn't really do it any justice. I think it's kind of lost a lot of its coffee characteristic. It just kind of tastes like, like a very bland, carbonated, like... I wouldn't even say it's coffee at this point. If you've ever had, like, one of those coffee candies, like candy with, like, coffee stuff in them, or even one of those, like, Kahlua coffee... Kahlua coffee chocolate like truffles. I'd say it kind of tastes like that if you mixed it with a little, if you mush it up and put it in a little bit of water. It's not as coffee intense, more chocolate, and it's more like chocolatey, but it's kind of watered down. The clarified, the clarified mind mush, which I thought I had a name for it. Purif purified, purified mind obliterator? A clear, 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 clear mind. It's called a clear mind. The clear mind is, it's, it's nice, it's sweet. It's a very, it's a very light coffee flavor. I don't even think it's more coffee than it is chocolate. That was using like a Kahlua mudslide, which it's just, it's just a different liqueur than uh, Mr. Black is. I'd say it's more on the liqueur side than it is on the coffee side, but it actually turned out 
really, really well. I was not expecting for it to get to this point. This was really, really awesome. Um, and it came out quite nice on the other side. Nice like, little golden color. And then the Mind Obliterator, which, as I said, almost tastes like ginger. Like, like gingerbread. Yeah, damn, wow. That is like very, like what I'm getting off of that is just complete gingerbread. So that's a very interesting, it's a very interesting flavor combination. I'm very good with that. Now, like honestly, what I would rather be doing is I'd rather be continuing this, continuing for the night and just kind of chatting for the rest of the night. But I can't just be, I can't drink these cocktails tonight. I have to, I have other, I have to make sure that I'm not hungover for the morning. I have various appointments that I have to do back in New Jersey and I got to get there somehow. So I'm probably just going to leave this here. Um, just a quick note before i head off for the evening it's a little short so i want to apologize about that i was having a lot of fun here that on tuesday on monday i'm not going to be doing a game stream uh i'll be doing that on tuesday because i have a friend coming over and so they will take priority there and then um i'll be back next wednesday anyway you like cocktails come back again wednesday it's uh, it's fun we do these things i also got an instagram if you're into that kind of stuff i post all the pictures and recipes on there and a discord where we like we don't really discuss the drinks although i'd like to discuss the drinks um but but i you know it's a matter of the, it's the community's prerogative and, and mods, but I don't have mods. We're still, we're still working on this and kinds of things, but this is fun. This is excellent. I really appreciate all coming here. More than awesome. Thanks for popping in, do it, dropping that subscribe there and uh, young Mojo. It's always a pleasure to see you and everybody else who didn't say anything. That's fine. We appreciate your presence anyways, because it, I mean, seriously though, if we didn't appreciate the people that, that arrive, then what kind of what would we do what's the insta link i think it's just, it's just camera with an x it's the same it's the same thing i think uh i can do i can do this button insta is it exclamation point insta or is it instagram instagram did i implement that i did not wow i'm dumb i thought i did do that well my bot can be a little silly sometimes those don't show up in chat oh sweet that's me that's the guy click it it's an instagram but only if you're a social person it's okay if you're not in any case i will be back again next wednesday eight o'clock p.m eastern standard time for another free cocktail lesson i do not know what it will be but it will be forever and ever so erase your mind tonight or don't whatever you want to do thank you everybody so much this has been wonderful until next time y'all bye